In this segment, we're going to look at the math that is involved in shifting the heavy-duty non-synchronized truck transmission. There is a direct relationship between your speed in miles per hour, the gear ratio that you're using in the transmission, the gear ratio of your axle, the size of your tire, which in this formula is going to be expressed in revolutions per mile. And because we started with miles per hour, we have to divide by 60 in order to end up with revolutions per minute, which is what shows on your tachometer. And that's our best friend when it comes to changing gear. So if we are driving down the highway at, let's say, 52 miles an hour, and we're in 10th gear in a 10-speed transmission, that gear ratio is 0.73. For our hypothetical truck, we're going to use an axle ratio of 3.42. That's fairly common in the industry. The most popular tire size here in the U.S. is a low profile 22.5. That is usually approximately 515 revolutions per mile. We divide all that by 60. We're going to end up with a RPM figure of 1,114. Round it off, of course, if you actually do the arithmetic on a the calculator, they're going to be decimal places. If you're at this speed in this gear and you decide you want to change to the next gear, the ratio for ninth gear is one. At that same speed, ninth gear's ratio times your same axle and your same tire size, and again divided by 60, is going to put you at 1526. So to change the gear, in theory, you, with your double clutching process, you're going to back off the throttle, press the clutch pedal down halfway so you don't damage your input shaft brake, slip the transmission out of 10th gear, close the clutch, run your RPM from the 1114 up to 1526, and right when you get there, dip that clutch pedal halfway and slip into ninth gear. And that's double clutch shifting, in theory. The problem is, all of these numbers matter. And as soon as you start the shift, this number is probably not going to stay the same. If you're on level ground, You've got 52 miles per hour worth of wind resistance. You've got some friction with your tires and your driveline components. And so as soon as you back off the throttle and open the clutch to begin the shifting process, this number is going to start to go down. If it were to go down to, say, 50 miles an hour, which is a pretty reasonable guess, by the time you are ready to finish the shift, 50 at the start of this, and then through all of the rest of the arithmetic, actually lands you at 1467. It's not a huge difference, but it's enough of a difference to matter. When you go to change a gear, do you have to be perfect with the RPM? No, you don't have to be perfect, and that's good because that's impossible. A human being is not going to get this number exactly right. But you do have to be close enough, and for our purposes, close enough is going to be plus or minus about 25 RPM. If you can get within 25 of this 1467, you're probably going to be able to slip into that ninth gear position and go on about your business. But if you hadn't made the correction from this theoretical number to this probably real life number, the difference between 1467 and 1526 is bigger than this. And when you try to go into ninth gear, things will at least get a little crunchy, if not just be impossible. And so you gotta take into account any change in speed that happens during the gear change. That's what makes this interesting. Now, if you were on a slight upgrade, this number is going to come down faster. So by the time you're ready to follow through with the second part of the shift, that might be down to 47 or 48 miles an hour. That would bring this number correspondingly lower. If you were on a very slight downgrade, it might actually stay the same. You know, gravity and friction balance out. It stays, and our original calculation would be correct. If you're used to making this downshift on the level, and then you try it on just a little bit of a downslope, and your speedometer doesn't move, 
you get a crunchy shift because your target was a little bit too high. If you're on a steeper downgrade, this number's going to go up. And that's why you've heard all those warnings about never try to shift down while you're going downhill. If this number goes up too far, you will not be able to get your RPM high enough to be able to get the gear. That gear will no longer be physically possible, and now you're roller coastering down the hill with no engine drag to keep things under control. So that's why you have all those warnings about downshifting and downhill being a dangerous combination. So for any gear change, if you know the number of the gear ratio in the transmission, and we've given you a handout that has the data for the 10 speed that has all the gear ratios from first gear through 10th gear plus the reverse ratios, and you know what your axle ratio is and what your tire size is, you can work the math out and get a perfect shift. But you're not going to do that going down the road because that would be ridiculous. So in another segment, I will show you a simpler way of taking care of all of this math that you're probably going to find a lot easier to cope with. I know I do.